All right, again, hello everybody. Welcome into our live options demo here today. Happy Friday to you all. Really excited to join you here today to show you some of our recent trades here over the past couple of weeks on the options side. We'll also walk you through some things that we're looking at going into next week. We are in a very active stretch in the markets, right in the heart of earnings season. A lot of the big tech names have released here this week. Uh, Facebook and Amazon come to mind. We still have Apple upcoming next week. So a lot of potential catalysts here to keep this good movement going. And we'll talk about that in more detail here today. If you wouldn't mind, if you guys would just post in the chat, let me know that you're hearing me okay. Looks like everything is coming through okay on my side. Just want to make sure that you see my screen and whatnot. So uh, just give me a little bit of feedback there. You will see uh, the questions box that you can post at any time during today's session. So if you need me to uh, revisit a topic or spend more time on a specific symbol, feel free at any point today to get those questions in. That's what we're here for. We want to make sure you get your questions answered uh, today. There's no sales pitch. We're not selling anything here today. We're just going to give you a glimpse into how we approach the markets uh, at NetPix. And specifically today, we're going to focus in on the options markets. Right, so I trade options exclusively. I should have mentioned this. Um, I, my name is Mike Rixey. I am the options specialist at NetPix. I focus exclusively on swing trading options in my own personal trading. I also run all of the options training for NetPix as well. I have done some day trading in years past. It's just it's not my forte. It's just not my uh, my, my desired method of trading. And it's more so due to my personality uh, and due to my schedule. I'm not very good at making split-second decisions. So I really struggled as a day trader. As you guys know, if you're trying to trade some of the futures markets on a day trading basis, you've got to be quick. If you hesitate at all, especially in the markets that we've seen the last few months, you're going to struggle. Well, I found that's exactly what was happening to me years ago. I, just, I wasn't very good at trading those fast-moving markets. I like to think through trades. I like to take that methodical approach where you know, I'm just thinking things through, um, not feeling rushed to get in and out of trades, and that's why swing trading just fits me best. And the reason I bring that up, you know, I talk to traders on a, on a regular basis, and what I see, a big reason for struggles in many situations is people are just trading the wrong markets. You have to understand, okay, if you're the type of person that tends to think through, uh, through things slowly like I do, you know, the day trading side of things, it's not going to be the best uh, setup for you. And I don't want you to try to force one approach to work. There might be great profit potential there, and there certainly is on the day trading side of things. But if you're not very good at executing your system correctly on those fast-moving markets, it, it just defeats the purpose. Right? So I'd rather have you focus in on those areas, focus in on those markets that fit you best. You know, just because you start to see people post their profits on specific markets does not mean those are good markets for you. At NetPix, we're big believers in working with our students when I want to find their area of focus, find their little niche that fits their account size, that fits their personality, that fits their risk tolerance. And if you take that approach, you take those steps, you're going to be far better off. You're going to see far better results on a consistent basis long term. So what I have found on the option side, I like to swing trade. And what we classify as swing trade is typically holding trades for anywhere from three days on out to a couple of weeks. That's the, the, the sweet spot for us on the swing trading side of things. We could certainly have some outlier moves. We've had some day trades over the past couple of months with the market so volatile. We've had some trades that take um, a couple of months just depending on how active the market is. But uh, ideally, a couple of days on to a couple of weeks is the, the prime spot for us on the swing trading side. So we're going to focus in on some of, those, uh, some of those markets that we like to look at. We're also big believers in focusing in on the same watch list of products on a regular basis. We don't run any type of scanning software. I know a lot of people take that approach. The reason I don't do that I don't want to be left trading names that I have no experience with, not familiar with the symbols, how liquid they are, uh, what does an average trade looks like. And that's the problem that a lot of people face is they just they run a scan looking for a specific chart pattern. Well, in many cases, you're going to be left trading products that you may have no experience with, you may never have heard of before. I think that's very difficult to trade any type of confidence taking that approach. So we like to take a very... Uh, consistent approach. We look at the same list of products week in and week out. It's a mix of stocks and ETFs. It's a mix of different sectors to make sure we do have the diversification there. 
but it also allows us to make sure we're trading um, the most active names, right? The names that have historic track records of moving back and forth, that have good track records of liquidity, meaning they have good volume and open interest. By trading that same list of products, we get to know those names really well, get familiar with how they move, and as a result, I'm able to trade with much more confidence. So when you start to get into our training sessions, you'll see we trade the same names day in and day out, and that's a huge advantage to this type of an approach. So we'll get to those charts here in just a second and walk you through how we actually take our individual trades. Just real quick, let's talk about the market in general because that can have an impact on how I take my trades going forward. I need to form an opinion on what I feel the market's going to do next. Now, this step in the process, it's not designed for me to time my entry and exit points. I'm just trying to determine what type of position size do I feel comfortable taking. Do I need a little bit more bullish or bearish or do I want to be more neutral? That can have an impact on the type of option strategies that I use. Now, I want to base my decisions and my outlook off of numbers and statistics. I don't want to base it off of what I'm hearing on financial media. I don't want to base it off of what I'm seeing off uh, you know, any type of a website or social media. I want to focus in on the chart patterns because that's going to tell me everything that I need to know. Bottom line is if you turn on CNBC, Bloomberg, Fox Business, everybody that you hear talking there has an agenda. If you're basing your decisions and your outlook off of what you're hearing on financial media, it's a, basically a guessing game at best. You have no idea what's going into their research. You have no idea what positions they have on. So is there a conflict of interest there? What I'd rather have you do is focus in on the charts because the price action is going to it's going to tell us everything we need to know. You know, we've had in the last couple of months, we've had situations with North Korea. We've had the trade war with China. We've had the situation over in Syria, you know, in Russia. We've had all of these news events that have had big impacts on the market, and what I've told my students during this whole time is, you know, don't drive yourself crazy looking at the news right, and trying to base your decisions off of the news because everything that happened news-related over the past couple months was reflected in the price on the charts. That's going to tell us everything we need to know. A perfect example of this is we're in earnings season right now. Right, we've had Amazon and Facebook out just this week. You've seen some pretty massive moves in both of those names. For me, I'm not going to try to dissect an earnings release and, and go into the conference call and you know and hear the you know the statements being made because bottom line is it doesn't matter. What matters is the market's reaction to that news. We can have the best earnings release ever, right? The numbers look phenomenal, they blow the number out of the water. And we've seen cases where the market actually moves lower. I mean, look at Amazon as an example. We're still up $75, but we were up over $120 earlier in the session. So Amazon's actually been moving lower all day long, even though the numbers were blowout numbers. So, you know, focusing on price action on the chart is going to be a much better approach long term. So I trade full time for an income, and I don't pay attention to financial media. I can't tell you the last time I had on CNBC or Bloomberg or Fox Business. I don't pay attention to it. I don't want to be distracted by it. I want to focus purely on executing my system correctly. Now, looking at this daily chart of QQQ, I, I look at the index products. I like to trade them off of our range-based charts, which we'll look at in just a second. But I use this daily chart to just get a big picture glimpse into what the market has done recently and what it could potentially be doing going forward. I've got a variety of different moving averages here. Again, I'm not looking for exact entry and exit points. I'm just trying to determine, okay, based on this chart pattern, how aggressive do I want to be on the upside? How aggressive do I want to be on the downside? We've seen some pretty big swings over the past few months. And here just recently, you know, coming into this week, we were coming off of a pretty nice push to the downside uh, on the NASDAQ. We have since recovered, but look how price action stuck right in between that cluster of moving averages there. We don't really have a clear direction here. There's a lot of back and forth going on. There's a, quite a tug of war going on between the bulls and the bears here. For me to really ramp up my aggressiveness, I want to see a push up above that upper moving average. That's the, uh, that is the 50 period moving average, and it's sitting right around the 164.50 level. A breakout above that level on a closing basis, we should see a nice push to the upside. Now, on the flip side, if we start to break these moving averages on the downside, let's say we start to break 161 on the downside. That's the 20-period the moving average. If we start to break that level, I'm more willing to get aggressive on the downside. Now, there's a number of different ways that we can get aggressive uh, or conservative with our trades. 
there's three main ways that we can use on the option side. The first is just through position size. So at the moment, with us stuck right inside of these moving averages, with a lot of back and forth going on right now, okay, I don't mind trading smaller position sizes. Maybe you cut back. Maybe if you're used to trading 10 contracts, you trade five contracts. If you're used to trading two contracts, trade one contract, and so forth. You know, just because we're in a period of uncertainty. Now, if either one of those uh, levels that we just talked about break on a closing basis, then I'm willing to get more aggressive with my position size. The second way that we could go is just through the strategies that we use. We're going to talk about a variety of different strategies over the next few minutes. If I want to get more aggressive, I have no issue trading long calls and long puts. If I want to get more conservative, if I'm a little less certain on the markets moving nicely going forward, I could go to a vertical spread, for example where I can really reduce my costs and increase my chances of success uh, going forward. The third way I can control that risk is just through expiration cycles. Getting more aggressive, if we start to see the volatility explode again going into next week, let's say the market completely falls out of bed, well, I'm more willing to trade the weekly options. Those weekly options are going to react faster to changes in stock price. If we're in a period like we're in now where we're just kind of chopping you know, back and forth between support and resistance, in that case, I'm going to go farther out in time. I'm going to go out to the monthly options. The farther out in time that I go, I still have profit potential. Those are just going to be slower reacting trades. So if we do just chop sideways, the time decay is not as big of an issue. So we'll talk about mixing up our approaches here. We've done a lot of that over the last couple of weeks, just taking what the market's giving us. A lot of times people get focused on just taking aggressive trades with long calls and long puts and hoping for the best, when in reality, maybe we're not in the proper market environment for that type of aggressive trading. So those are the support and resistance levels that I'm looking at going into next week. The volume has been pretty good here this week. The VIX is still above 16. That's still a decent number. I don't want it to head much below 15 because if that happens, we're going to start to see the market really slow down. So I'd like to see that VIX you know, rally up a little bit going into next week. That would be ideal for us. Now let's talk about some of our trades. So I just determined that I want to be a little bit more conservative over the next couple of days on any new trades that I get just because we're in a period of uncertainty. We're also coming off of a period where you know we have a lot of earnings releases that have been um, that have come out here this past week. We've got a lot of them upcoming next week as well. So you know, with all of the the catalysts that are there, I'd rather be a little bit more conservative. So what we've been telling our students is you know being more conservative for us, again, I can adjust my position size my strategy, or my expiration cycle. So we've been trading a lot of monthly options here over the past couple of weeks, just trying to get a little bit more conservative. So let's take a look at Facebook. I mentioned it's really important to have that system in place that we can stay disciplined to and look at the same products day in and day out. We have a system which we call our reversal trade. It's part of our options fast track program. We have a very specific set of criteria that we look for in a trade and we've programmed that criteria into what we call our trade calculator. So when all of that criteria is met, we see the exact entry point, we see the two targets, and we see the stop. That's what those pink dots, and I'm circling there on the chart, that's what those dots represent. Now, with this being a reversal setup, I'm looking for good swings back and forth. I'm looking for movement off of overbought or oversold conditions. In this case, on the last trade that we close out on Facebook here before earnings, let me go ahead and get my data box up. So on the short trade, we got the short setup because the percent R indicator down at the bottom gave us an overbought condition. Okay, we moved up above the minus 10 line. That's step number one for a trade. Now, for those of you that have used the percent R indicator in the past, you know that you can't just use it on its own. You have to build in some layers of confirmation. Bottom line is markets can stay overbought or oversold longer than any of us expect. So just because I have an overbought reading here does not mean I immediately jump into a trade. I have to wait for that confirmation. And step number two is I have to wait for at least one candle to close below my signal line, which is the solid white line on the chart. Well, you can see I got that right here on April 20th. That's step number two. There's a third and final step. I have to wait for price action to confirm. Once the bar closes below the signal line, that's when I get my entry point. That's the first series of pink dots. And it told me my entry was at 165.17. That third and final step, you can see we had to wait till Monday morning. We initially set up on a Friday, Friday midday. It didn't trigger it until Monday morning. 
Okay, so price action finally got down, touched that entry point. We knew it was time to put the position on. Now, before we talk about how we took this trade, let's talk, let's uh, rewind a little bit. Let's talk about the chart type that we're using here. This is not a time-based chart at all. This is a range-based chart. So the problem that I have with the time-based charts, if you've heard me talk in the past, you've probably heard me walk through this. The issue that I have with time-based charts is that in many cases, they're going to lag. If you're waiting for, if you're using a daily chart and you're waiting for a daily candle to close before you get a setup, well, we've seen sessions here lately where we've had four, five, six hundred point uh, swings intraday on the Dow. If you're waiting for a daily candle to close, you're potentially missing out on a lot of movement. The range-based charts, on the other hand, focus exclusively on price action. So on this chart of Facebook, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is actually a range chart of 145 ticks or $1.45. What that means is every candle on this chart represents a move of $1.45 from high to low. It has nothing to do with time. It could take two minutes for a candle to form. It could take two days for a candle to form. It all depends on how active the market is. So that gives us a huge advantage because it allows us to focus in on the very best periods of movement. The time-based charts, is they're going to continue to print candles regardless of how active the market is. With the range-based chart, it's really not going to print candles unless the market's moving. So you're going to see a lot uh, smoother price patterns on the range-based charts. Now, how did we come up with that $1.45 number? There's a formula that we look at once a quarter. We know market conditions will change over time. So instead of trying to force the same setting to work in all types of markets, we're going we're gonna to readjust things every quarter to make sure we're fine-tuning things to those changing conditions. So the range setting is going to be different for every stock on our list. We know Facebook moves completely different than Bank of America, for example. A $1.45 move on Facebook is completely different than a $1.45 move on Bank of America. So that formula that we look at, we look at it for every name on our list. That way the system is really dialed in to that specific name on the list. All right, so going back to that short trade, once that entry point was hit, I came in and I bought the May 170 puts for $8.56. So it was $856 per contract. So I went out to the monthly options. I went farther out in time just to make sure uh, you know, I have some time there in case the market just chopped. I could have taken it with a smaller position size if I wanted to, or I could have taken it with a put spread. I decided to use a combination of the three, so I went with the long put, took it with a, sl a slightly smaller position size than I'm uh, used to, okay, and we again, we utilize those monthly options. So the, the put options there were a little bit more expensive because the earnings were upcoming, so the volatility was very expensive. Yeah, the volatility was high. Had to pay a little bit more for it. If you take a look at that and say, well, I can't afford to put $856 into one trade, a couple things there. If you turn this into a put spread, the vertical spread criteria that we teach typically reduces the cost by 30 to 50%. So if you took this with a put spread, there's many cases where you're going to get in for around $400. It's a pretty significant savings, and that might make it more realistic for the smaller account size. I didn't mind the higher cost here. I went with the long puts, and, and you can see it triggered in and immediately flipped back to the upside that same day, that same Monday. So immediately I'm underwater. If I don't have that system in place giving me the exact entries, targets, and stops, I'm probably in a state of panic in here. Maybe not panic, but I'm, I'm worried, right, because I'm, I'm underwater, I'm losing money. Well, in this case, there really wasn't any doubting. There Really wasn't any questioning here because I could see my stop was up at 169.16. I hadn't hit it yet. I mean, I was underwater, but until a stop or a target is hit, there's no reason for me to close out of the trade. Fast forward 24 hours, the very next day, we went from a losing trade to a full profit. You can see we came down and hit the first target. Once that first target's hit, we like to use the first target as a money management level. We can do a couple things at that level. If you're trading multiple contracts, you can go ahead and close out of half of your position there and book the profit. On the second half of the trade, you're going to move the stop to the entry point. So we're going to take the risk off the trade. If you're only trading one contract, you're not going to do anything at first target other than just move the stop. You will keep your full, your, uh, full position on going for the second target. Now the system moved the stop down for us. It moved the stop dot from all the way up here down to the entry point. It's not going to adjust an order automatically for us. All right, it's not a robot. We still have to actually manually go in and place and manage those orders, but it gets that roadmap for us. So we can quickly come in, and there's no guesswork. There's, 
there's no scratching your head saying, well, do I stay in? Uh, you know, do I get out, book the profit? Everything's outlined for us in real time. So once that second target was hit later in the day, we went ahead and we closed out of that position, booked a $394 profit. And that was a 46% return. A 46% return on a trade that I got more conservative on, a trade that was in and out in 24 hours. You know, I'm, I'm thrilled with that type of return especially considering it came right before earnings. Now, the system followed it up. We also got an oversold reading on percent R down here at the bottom. We had a long setup here on Wednesday, and it looks like it triggered in, which it did. You can see it touched the blue dot. That first blue dot, that's our entry point. We have our two targets up above and the stop below. I did not take this trade because we do not like to trade through earnings. We teach this to our students. There's earnings filters that we use. Because if you're on the wrong side of this type of a move, we've seen stocks here this week move 10, 12% overnight. We had CMG, which is Chipotle, actually make a 25% move yesterday, intraday, because of earnings. You get caught on the wrong side of a 25% move and you're looking at a full loss immediately. I don't like that risk. I would much rather you know, sit the earnings out, wait for the release to come out, and then get in sync after the fact. So in this case, clearly we could have seen it would have been a pretty big winner. It was just too risky. We did not take that trade following our earnings filter. So now going into next week, no surprise, on such a big move to the upside on Facebook with those earnings numbers that came out, we are overbought. We got another move up above minus 10 on percent R. We got a close below the signal line. That gave us the entry point. So now our entry is at 172.87. That's the level that we're looking at here going into this afternoon and early next week. If we touch that level, I know it's time to get into the trade. So I don't have to sit there and spend a ton of time over the weekend researching and trying to pick which names are best for me next week. Everything's outlined for me. I know exactly where I'm going to get into the trade come Monday morning. Now, here's the neat part about this type of an approach. The system remains the same on every product on our list. So let's go take a look at a completely different product. Let's take a look at PayPal. Symbol PYPL, it's another name on our list. We like to have a good mix of stocks and ETFs, different sectors, that's ideal for us. So PayPal, completely different stock from Facebook, right? But the system remains the same. The only difference here is we're looking at a different range setting on the chart. So every candle on this chart of PayPal represents 67 cents of price action from high to low. So we're really dialing the system into this specific stock on our list. But as far as the criteria that goes into a setup, that remains the same. So here on PayPal, overbought condition on percent R, closed below the signal line, the entry point was hit. I came in and I bought the May 80 puts, $3.50, so $350 per contract. Now this one a little bit different in that we had to hold a little bit longer. right? I mean, we did not get that overnight move like we saw on Facebook. This one took a couple of days. Okay, we triggered in on a Friday. First couple of days, Friday into Monday and even Tuesday morning, we were just chopping sideways. But because that calculator is printing everything for me, that roadmap for me to follow, again, there's no second guessing whether I should be in the trade or not. As long as I haven't hit a stop or a target yet, there's no reason to close out of the trade. Well, fast forward here and you know, earlier this week, we came down, we hit that first target. So again, I can close out of half of my position if I have multiple contracts on. Move the stop down to break even on the second half of my trade. And then I close out of the full position at that second target. It gave me $190 profit, 54% return. This one took, it took about three and a half days. Three and a half trading days, that is. We did have to hold over a weekend as well. So very typical for a swing trade. Now, because the calculator is printing the setups for me, this is something where I don't need to be in front of the charts all day long. I like to come in three times a day. I like to come in once in the morning around the market open, once around lunch, and once in the afternoon before the market closes. All in all, it's about 20 minutes a day is what I really try to focus in on the charts and on my personal trades. That frees up my schedule, allows me to get on to other work commitments, other family commitments. I don't have to be stuck in an office all day long. And when you start to take a look at this profit, you know, we're talking about $190 profit here on PayPal. On Facebook, we're talking about a, almost a $400 profit. You know, just trading one contract alone, I mean, you've got a pretty nice supplemental income here. 
potentially even replacing an income depending on your position size and how many names are on your watch list. So really nice trade here. On paper, looking at the far right edge of the chart, looking at live market conditions, we do not have any setups here. There's no blue or pink dots on the chart. I don't need to try to justify a new setup here. If the system does not give me a setup on the chart, I don't try to force it. I just wait for the next setup to print. So I'm currently flat on PayPal. Let's go over to Square, symbol SQ. Go ahead and get that data box out of the way. Very similar setup here. Okay, we had a move to the downside. We triggered short right here at 50.70. Bought the Bay 51 and a half puts, $3.50. So again, $350 per contract here. This is another setup that triggered it. It initially set up on a Friday, triggered in the following Monday, hit target that Tuesday. So we're in and out of this trade in 24 hours. They don't always work that quickly. But the market's been very volatile. We've seen a lot of big moves. So it worked out great for us. Came down and hit that full target. That's another $140 profit, 40% return. Now, the system, again, I haven't even had a chance to mark this one up. We followed it up. We got oversold on percent R. We had a close above the signal line. This one came in and also hit full target. We were in this trade for two days. Okay, this one triggered in um, here on Wednesday. It hit full target here just this morning. Okay, so we're in and out, book the full profit, free up that capital, and it's really nice. The timing couldn't have been better on this trade. Anytime that you can get out of those setups before the weekend, that's ideal. In this type of a market, when headlines can hit at any point during the weekend, I'd rather just be flat if I can, if at all possible. In this case, we were able to do that. So we booked the full profit on Square, and we're now flat. All right, let's, let's switch it up here a little bit. The trades that we just got done talking about, we're talking about long calls and long puts. They're pretty aggressive directional trades, which I don't mind with a portion of my portfolio. We all have opinions on what we think the market should do. These trades here are giving us some really nice returns, really nice percentage returns, really nice dollar returns. The problem with these trades is they only have one way of making money. If I buy a put option, I have to have that stock move to the downside immediately. If I hold too long, the time decay is going to add up and it's going to suck some of the profit potential out of the position or lead to a larger loss. So it's certainly a more aggressive trade. We mentioned earlier, we want the diversification. We want a better mix of products, mix, a better mix of trade types, just because we have no idea what the market is going to do next. The better diversification we can implement, the more consistent our returns will be going forward. So let me switch this up here. And let me go ahead and remove the indicator so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, let's take a look at IWM. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples here um, of trades that were just closed out here recently. So IWM is the Russell 2000 ETF. It's one of the index products that we like to trade. With this style of trading, we want to look at selling spreads. Whenever I sell an option, whether it be an individual option or a spread, I'm putting the time decay in my favor. So every day that I hold the trade, I'm benefiting from that time decay adding up. It's a very different approach from buying a call or a put. Now, we like to sell spreads because we like to be in a risk-defined trade. I've talked to a lot of people that are intimidated by selling options because they think there's massive amounts of risk there. What you'll see in a moment is that selling spreads is actually much safer than just buying an outright call or a put. Okay, it's still a risk-defined trade. We know what our max loss is right up front, but it's just going to give us more ways of making money. It gives us a higher probability of success. So here on IWM, what we looked at here uh, a couple weeks ago, we had seen the market make a pretty impressive, impressive run to the upside. Now, it's been a pretty repeatable pattern, up, down, up, down, up, and then down again. So we're seeing some pretty nice waves here back and forth. Instead of just coming in, we, were, we wanted to lean a little bit bearish on this trade. But I didn't want to just come in and buy a long put because if I buy a long put, it has to move to the downside quickly. I wasn't so convinced that that was going to happen. 
wanted to be a little bit more conservative. So I, instead, I came in and I sold the call spread. I sold the April 27 weekly options, and I sold the 156, 157 call spread. So I'm selling the 156 call, and I'm buying the 157 call to make it a risk-defined trade. Right, so I collected $0.38 cents per spread, or $38 per spread to put that trade on. Whatever I collect is the most I can make on that setup, on, on that trade. It put my break-even point at 156.38. I drew that line on the chart just so you can see it visually. I didn't care if IWM moved higher, lower, or sideways. As long as it stayed below that level, I got to make money. I also made money from time decay adding up and from volatility decreasing. So I've got five different ways of making money on this trade. I don't have the home run potential on the profit side like I would with a long call or long put, but in exchange, I'm giving myself five ways of making money. Now, the beauty here, and this should be attractive to many of you with smaller accounts, is as I mentioned that this is actually a safer way of trading. Not only do we have five ways of making money on this trade, this only tied up $62 of capital per spread to put the trade on. So you take a look at it initially and say, well, $38 of profit potential, that doesn't seem like anything. It only tied up $62 of capital to put the trade on to begin with. You could do this thing 10 times and you've only got a little over $600 of risk. Now all of a sudden you're looking at $380 of profit, a little bit more attractive there, right? A lot of flexibility with position sizing when you're trading these spreads. Now, we did, fortunately, and it took a couple of days, and we fortunately had a push to the downside. You can see right there. We ended up closing out of this trade earlier this week, sent out the alert to all of our students, said, okay, it's time to close out of the position. We bought it back for $0.09. Cents. It gave me a $29 profit per spread. Has it been a really large move to the downside? It really hasn't. It certainly has moved lower, but we haven't seen the market fall apart by any means, right? It just kind of drifted its way to the downside, and as a result, that's all we needed. It stayed below our break-even point. We booked the profit and uh, freed up the capital for the next trade. It's just it's a really fun route to go. It's a really fun uh, way of approaching the markets because we don't need to have everything line up perfectly in our favor. Okay, let me switch this over. Let's take a look at NVIDIA. NVIDIA is one of those tech names that it can be intimidating because it's an expensive stock. It's over $200 a share. The options are also expensive. It's not uncommon if you're going to come in and buy a call or a put, you might spend $1,000 per contract. They can be very, very expensive. Well, in this case, I wanted, again, to lean bearish. I wanted to put us in a position that would benefit from the market moving to the downside, but I didn't want to just buy a put because that, that long put would only give me one way of making money on the trade. So instead, we came in and we sold, again, utilizing the April 27 weekly options, the ones that are expiring here today, we sold the 240, 242 call spread, and we collected $0.78, cents, or $78 per spread. The best part about this trade is we only tied up $172 of capital to sell the spread one time. That's a fraction of what you're going to pay to buy a call or a put. That 172 is the most I can make, or I'm, I'm sorry, it's the most I can lose on the trade. If I'm dead wrong on the direction, if NVIDIA actually moves to the upside, the most I can lose is $172. So it's a very safe trade. Now my break-even point was at 240.78. That's that horizontal white line on the chart. I didn't care where NVIDIA went as long as it stayed below that line. Now we threatened it initially. I mean, we threatened it here on this move to the upside. Fortunately, it moved right back to the downside wasn't the biggest move that we've ever seen. It was just more of a, just a chop sideways to drift lower. That's all we needed, right? Because we close out of the position for 14 cents. It gave me a $64 profit per spread. I didn't need an earth shattering move here to make money. I want to have a mix of strategies. I want to have those long calls and long puts because those give me the larger returns, but these short spreads give me the diversification that I need give me more different types of, of trades, more different ways of making money, and that's what's going to lead to the consistent growth in my equity curve long term. Right. On SPY, we took a very similar approach in that we sold a call spread. Here again, all we did is we wanted to sell a spread that would put us in a slightly bearish position. We sold the 273.5, 274.5 call spread and collected $0.37 cents or $37 per spread tied up $63 of capital per spread, left my break-even point at 273.87. I just needed price action to stay below that line. 
the cool part about this is you can draw that line on the chart. You can literally come in in about 30 seconds a day, see are you below that line or not. If you are, nothing you need to do. Right, very easy trade to manage. And again, we don't need a big move to the downside. We have not had a big move to the downside since we put this trade on. We didn't need it. All we needed to do is drift sideways. It could move lower or it could have moved a, a little bit higher on us and we still would have been okay. So again, we have five different ways of making money on this type of a position. Fortunately for us, we closed it out. We booked a $26 profit per spread. Great trade. You start to add it in to some of our other long call and long put trades. That's just a great way of making money in the market long term. Just a great way to start to implement some of that diversification. Now, how did I select these trades? We outlined all of that in our training. That way our students know exactly how to place these trades on their own. Puts you in complete control of your trading, which is a huge advantage. Now, we've also got a new system that was just released. We're really excited about this. What you're looking at, I just flipped over to the TradeStation platform just so you can see the, the differences in the visuals. This is a completely different system. This is what we call our Spotlight Power Trader. This one is utilizing a time-based chart. A lot of you like the time-based charts because they're predictable as far as when the candles are going to close. This is the 195-minute chart. So it actually gives you two candles a day instead of one. So if you're looking at the daily chart and you find, hey, it's just moving so slow, I don't get a lot of frequency of trades, the 195 minute is going to speed it up. Now, just like the other system that I showed you, everything is outlined for us ahead of time. We know exactly where our entry points are at, where our targets are at, where our stops are at. You can see the trades actually identified on the charts for us. So this is just another way of approaching the markets. Another way of getting that diversification into the mix, and look at the performance report. This is over the past two years worth of trades on QQQ. Let me stretch this down so we can see it. We've got a 94% win rate. You've got a profit factor of 14.65, which we want to see a profit factor anywhere above 1.5. So we're well above that level. $99 of profit, and again, the, this performance report is reflecting the numbers as if you were just trading the shares of stock, if you were just taking every trade with a share of stock. We're taking it a step further, and we're taking the trades with the options, but I want to make sure that the system is picking direction correctly. Well, I've got a 94% win rate over the past two years. Doesn't guarantee, again, that I'm going to win going forward. It just means that the performance is there. The numbers and the statistics are in our favor going forward. You start to combine this type of a win rate with the percentage returns that we're seeing on the options. That's a pretty powerful combination, no doubt about it. And, and again, it gives us a lot of flexibility with the different types of products that we can look at. I mean, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, Netflix. Again, everything is outlined for us. So you can see the, the last blue, series of blue dots here that I'm circling on the chart. I had my entry point right here, that blue plus sign. I had two targets up above and I had a stop below. So once I trigger into this trade, I know exactly where to get out ahead of time. Whether the trade goes in my favor or not, everything is outlined for me. Now, fortunately for us, we came up, and you can see that we started hitting target levels on the upside pretty quickly. You also notice that along the way, the stop started to move up, right? So the stop initially went up to break even. As we continue to move up into profit, we, we continue to move the stop up, and we were trailing our balance line, trailing that dotted green line there. So I'm locking in profit on the second half of my trade along the way. I booked a, a full profit at full at second target with half of my position. And then with the second half of the trade, I'm using a trailing stop going for the bigger winner. And that was that was taken out. We got taken out right at that break even, or I'm sorry, right at that trailing stop. So we took a partial profit on the second half of the trade. Everything's outlined for me from start to finish. We followed it up with a short trade here this week. That one came down, only hit first target. Okay, you can see on the, the balance of the position, we got taken out at that trailing stop. So it was a partial profit. It was a very small winner for us. In this type of a market with all this indecision that we're seeing, I'm thrilled when we can go ahead and reduce that risk as quickly as possible because when I take a look at the results long term, let me show you this performance report. 
Over the past two years, we've got an 84% win rate. Profit factor is above 18. Again, I just need it above 1.5, and I can make money. So it's well above that, and I'm showing $423 of profit, just trading the shares of stock. So when you start to combine that with the power of the options, that's when trading starts to get really, really fun. Just on the trades that are on the chart, let me get that data window out of the way. One, two, three, four winners in a row just over the past couple of months on Netflix alone. Now, not every trade has been a full winner. We've had some partial winners in there. But when you start to see you know, three, four, five winners in a row, we're talking about massive amounts of profit there. And then on Amazon, for those of you that like to trade the high-priced products, maybe you have a bigger account size. We know Amazon has been a very, very volatile name, very, very impressive name um, here over the past couple of years. And again, the system, again, is outlining everything for us. Entry points, targets, and stops, doesn't matter if we're moving to the upside or the downside. You can see back in February, we had a really nice winning trade on the upside, identified by the blue dots. We followed it up in March with a move to the downside which was also a really nice winner. What you're going to have happen here with this time-based chart, it's just going to be less active than the range-based charts that we talked about earlier. Okay, You're not going to get one to two trades a week like we can see on the range-based charts. You may only get one or two trades a month, but when you start to take a look at this approach, when you have this type of a win rate, maybe you're somebody that doesn't need the frequency. Maybe you don't need to be in trades all the time. Maybe you're looking at this as just a purely supplemental source of income. This is a great way to do it right here. You're taking a handful of trades every month. You know, you can set up a watch list of 20 products. You start to have a watch list of 20 products, and each one has about a you know, you know, one to two trades triggering a month. That's plenty of frequency right there. Okay, look at the performance report on Amazon over the past two years. 67% win rate, profit factor above four. Okay, those are really, really nice numbers. Those are numbers that I will be more than willing to trade going forward. Right, so this is another new approach, and this is what we're doing all the time with our students. We know market conditions will change. We know that uh, there's going to be new opportunities going forward. If we can create a new approach that's going to increase our performance, give us a higher winning percentage, more profit, and it's easier to trade, that's exactly what we're going to do. So the Spotlight Power Trader was released to all of our inner circle students here over the past, uh, gosh, the past month or so. And there's just been an incredible amount of profit uh, that's booked. And the, the best part about being an inner circle member, if you want more details on that, send me an email. You'll have access to every system that we offer, everything that we offer currently, as well as anything new that's released down the road, you have access to our entire toolbox. It's not something where you, uh, you know, you're paying thousands of dollars for every system. It's all included with our inner circle program. Now, in fairness, you know, not every trade is going to win. We talked about a number of winning trades just because we've had a lot of them here <laughs> lately. It's just been great trading for us. It hasn't been perfect here just this week. It's been a really profitable week for me personally. Along the way, I've had winners, losers, and break-evens all this week. So if I take a look at Citigroup, for example. Well, over on Citigroup, if I zoom this out a little bit, I had a long trade coming into this week. We initiated it last at the end of last week. This one stopped out. I got into a long trade right here at that entry point. It flat out did not work. We came down and hit my stop. Okay, so I took the loss. It was a partial loser for me. The way the system is structured, what we're looking for is we want to have a good win rate, but we also want to make sure that our winners are larger than our losers. If I just let this trade go and said, well, I'm not going to stop out, I just want, let's see if I can battle back to break even, I run the risk of letting that small loser turn into a large loser. I'm not willing to let that happen. So when that stop was hit, I took the small loss, start to take a look at the end of the week at the performance. Yeah, I had some small losers along the way, but I had way more winners and as a result, I'm profitable at the end of the week. So many retail traders struggle because they're so afraid to take the loss. Right? You, you just you say, oh, I've got a losing trade here. Let's just hold on, see if I can get back to break even, and then I'll get out. Well, as a full-time trader, you have to be willing to take a loss. That's part of trading. We're, we're, regardless of the system or the market that you're looking at, we have to you know, 
identify when the market's not working in our direction. And if we hit a stop, let's respect the system and take the trade off. And that's exactly what we did on Citigroup here earlier this week. So the key there is long term, if you can have a diversified approach, good mix of markets, good mix of option strategies, good mix of different options expiration cycles, that's what's going to set you up for long term success. Now, I said I wasn't going to sell you anything today, and I'm not going to give you a sales presentation, but if you want more details on how our systems work, how we approach the options market, how did I identify those trades that I walked through, what criteria was I looking for when I sold the spreads? More than willing to connect and walk you through in more detail what the systems look like, my email is mike at netpicks.com. Feel free to email me. If we need to set up a phone call, I'm certainly willing to do that as well. Just send me a, an email. We'll, we'll arrange a time that works for all of us, and um, we'll go ahead and schedule a call. All right. I don't see any questions. So at this point, if you have any questions or comments, uh, need more details on anything that I've discussed here today, go ahead and type those comments or questions in now, and I'll go ahead and get to those. It's just, it's been a phenomenal couple of months for us. And I'm just, I'm not expecting the volatility to go away anytime soon. I, I think the volatility is here to stay. Doesn't necessarily mean I expect the market to fall apart here. I think we're going to have really nice swings back and forth the rest of the year. I think it's a prime time to be active in the market. So if you're looking to you know, increase your performance or if you're looking to get started with options for the first time, we would love to help you through that process. That way you can start to get on the right track and start to book the profits that we've seen here in our own trading. All right, so I'm going to start to wrap up um, here for the day and let you get on with um, the rest of your week and, and your weekend. Again, my email is mike at netpicks.com. Feel free to reach out with any questions or comments that you have. We'll be more than willing to connect and get back with you right away. We'll be back uh, in our next live demo coming up here in another uh, couple weeks. We're going to focus exclusively on the day trading side of things with the futures and forex market. So if you're interested there as well, feel free to join us at that point. Or in the meantime, uh, just reach out. Send us an email and we can send you some videos to watch that will cover the day trading side of things. All right, so enjoy the, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, everybody. Enjoy your weekend. And um, let us know how we can help here going into next week. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy day here today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up now, so we'll talk to you guys here in the near future.